Hi, I'm Sebastian right. from Profile Pro, and uh, I'm very pleased to welcome you guys and girls from uh, Lobet Scarp, um, a California-based prog band, I would say. So, first of all, um, just a word: Happy birthday to you, Adam Sears. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, I invite you to sing a song to Adam. Why not? So. <laughs> Happy Please do. Three, two, one. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. Happy Happy birthday. Birthday. Ah, that's okay. That's okay. We know the rest. We all know the rest. Back time. So, more seriously, can you introduce yourself? Please, each of you, can you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Adam Sears, so I am the uh, keyboardist slash vocalist of Lobate Scarp. I'm Andy Cat, and I play bass for Lobate Scarp. Hi, I'm Peter Matuchniak, and I play guitar for Lobate Scarp. I'm Christina Burbano Jeffrey, and I play uh, violin and sing backing vocals. And I'm Stephen Levitt, and I'm producer co producer of Lobate Scarp. Nice to meet you. In which circumstances did you did you form the the band? What was the idea or I would say ambition at the time? So it falls on a couple of different levels. So um, so yes is my favorite band as well as Christina's favorite band. Um, and I just recently met Christina. Actually, she just joined the band a, a couple months ago. So she probably. Um, wouldn't know about all this but um yeah so when i was growing up uh, basically when i was in high school you know i was listening to yes and um pink floyd and king crimson um and i just fell in love with the music uh everyone else in my high school were listening to pearl jam and uh stone temple pilots and you know and i like that stuff that was good stuff but it you know kind of like it, it became a little samey for me so um, that's when I went into my parents' records um, and discovered the Moody Blues and Ch and the Who, um, and uh, they had a couple Genesis records. Um, but then, um, yeah, I kind of just went on my own and did some discoveries on my own and uh, found progressive rock music and fell in love with it. Um, later, uh, later on, um, I... I discovered Spock's beard, um, which led me uh, to the conclusion that people are still doing this music and that there's a fan base for it. Uh, so it it, it, uh, it um, got me really excited, and um, because of that, I wanted to create Lobate Scarp. I wanted to create, at the time, I didn't know it was Lobate Scarp, or I didn't even have any idea of what I wanted to create, but I thought it would be cool to to make a prog band and so that's where it, it all came from and what is the meaning of Lobet Scarp it, it sounds special <laughs> oh yes <laughs> well the, yeah it is it's a it's a space term in fact uh it they're they are uh Lobet Scarps are uh geological formations that have um they're basically um they've they're mountain ridges on planets and the and the moon. So there's uh, lobate scarps are famous for being on the planet Mercury. Um, they're also on the moon and other planets as well. And ba basically, they're just these ridges that form um, when uh, earthquakes happen or erosion happens on the on the particular planets. It has to do with Mercury. fault lines. Mercury is a very tortured planet. It's very close to the sun, so the side that's facing the sun is very, very hot. The side away is very, very cold, so it's just constantly, and the gravity from the sun is pulling it apart, tearing it apart, so the, the planet is constantly being pulled and, and, and put back together, and so it creates these, these ridges and, and escarpments, if you will. So they're basically giant cliff faces, and some of them can be miles high from what I understand. Yeah. So, so we're a very and... tortured band. Very long. Well, <laughs> so when I think of Where scarps, we I think, each other. exactly. <laughs> when I think of scarps, I think of like lots of ups and downs, lots of uh, ridges. So like you know, in our music, it is a lots of. Uh, you know, sometimes we're heavy, sometimes we're melodic, or kind of, you know, we we kind of there's different levels to us, 
and we can be kind of spacey as well. So that helps. That that works. <laughs> and and musical eruptions, also. Yeah. Uh, Love to be yes. <laughs> Occasionally. Then you recorded in 2012 uh, your first album. What would be your retrospective perception of such an album? Uh, so, I'm sorry, ask that again? Yes, uh, you recorded your first album in 2012. Uh, and what would be your retrospective perception of your first album? As, uh, as far as how it turned out? Yeah, When you, look, you look back, back on, on it. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the band has had a chance to grow quite a bit uh, during that time. Uh, Adam's songwriting has really matured during that time. Uh, there's some elements that from the new album that you can trace back to the original al album and say, hey, this was kind of the seed for for what we recorded in the in the new record. And so you can see how that, that idea that might have been... Uh, present in the first album has grown into the second one. And you can also see where areas are completely new and completely new territory between the one album and the other. The fact that 10 years have elapsed in that time, you can really see kind of a maturity in the songwriting, maturity in the production. Mm -hmm. uh, we were very, very proud of the first album. Very, very well done, I, you know, if I say so myself. But you can really see how, how the band has matured and how the recording process has become more efficient and, and uh, uh, much more uh, sophisticated, I would say. Yeah, yes. that's a good, a good uh, point, Andy. And, yeah, and I think just kind of what to reiterate what he said, um, yeah, our new album is basically uh, a more solid version of the original album, even though it's a, they're completely different songs, but just kind of the idea, kind of like what I was trying to go for, I feel like we really uh, perfected it in the new album. Yeah. Well, not only that, but um, because we met Rich Mauser uh, working on the first album, he ended up mixing for us. Uh, we we got along so well with him that uh, when it came time to do the EP, which was the seed of this whole album, you have it all. Um, I really thought it would be important that Rich co-produce because he's so talented in his own right. And he's done so many uh, famous prog bands that having his perspective uh, on it just brought it up, I would say, 10 levels. <laughs> so that was also, you know, from my perspective. But the other day, I did listen to some songs that we were, we were on a live podcast and they played some songs from Time and Space. And I was saying to Adam damn, this holds up. Like, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised, too. Not only a while since I listened to it. Not only is there Rich's contribution, but on this new record, we've also had some guest performers who are just phenomenal players. We've actually had members from the band Yeah perform and, uh, on this record in cameos. And we also had members from Spock's Beard, a very, very famous uh, prog band, perform uh, cameos on this record. So, so in, in addition to Rich's contribution, there's, there's really been uh, an all-star cast, if you will. Yeah, uh, we, had a, string, we had a string quartet play on this one. Uh, we had, uh, and Rich played a lot of uh, additional instruments, as well as Steve. Steve played a lot of in uh, instruments. And, and Eric uh, Moore was just amazing. Eric Moore was our drummer. Uh, and for the big long tracks as well as the uh, first instrumental track, Eric Moore is from uh, the band um, uh, Infectious Suicidal Grooves, Tendons. Suicidal, Suicidal Tendencies, Tendons. 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 Mm -hmm. and Infectious Grooves. Mm -hmm. And in April, Rothfest for you, your first live maybe experience. Christina, how was it for you? What what was your impression? Well, that. Uh, it was it was really interesting because that I had when we got to Rosfest I had been in the band for a month and uh, we had basically had a couple of rehearsals and two gigs in LA and then we were at Rosfest so it was it was incredible it was a wonderful experience this is my actually my first prog fest which I'm not even sure how that's possible since I've been a huge prog fan since I was 14 but somehow this is my first prog fest that I've ever been To, and it was it was incredible uh you know most places you go you have to spend 20 minutes explaining to people what prog is before you know you even you even start a conversation and here everyone was speaking the same language and um 
you know, all the attendees and all the performers were just were just great to talk to, very kind, very accessible, and it was wonderful just hearing all the other bands play and uh, just really just sort of feeding the creativity. It was it was a really great it was a really great sense of community and um, and I think you know we we've talked about this as a band the fact that we you know I didn't Evan the drummer Evan and I didn't really know well we we haven't we haven't really we've only been in the band for a very short time and the fact that we all just got along famously you know the whole weekend and had a blast and you know really enjoyed each other's company I mean not only just musically but you know hanging out and going out to eat and joking around constantly uh, it was really it was really a wonderful experience so I I loved it it was it was so much fun and when I uh, when I invited um, Christina as well as Evan, our new drummer, um, into the band, it was it was I, I didn't really think past uh, Ross Fest. We basically were going to do three shows, so that was two local shows, and then finish it up at Ross Fest. But after Ross Fest, um, we got along so well. Um, um, I decided to uh, to invite them to join the band uh, permanently, or for as long as they want to basically so yeah so they are now christina and evan are now official members of the band we can never leave <laughs> welcome on board <laughs> and how was the feedback from the fans from the crowd it was great it was really great we got so so much positive feedback it was really wonderful it was real neat to, to, to all the different um levels of fans or people who didn't even know us um, there were some people who had our first album um, and they've had it for, you know, for about 10 years and they've never seen us before because we've never been out of California. So that was nice. Uh, they, they were really um, appreciating uh, that they got, got a chance to see us live. And then uh, throughout the weekend, there were um, random people coming up to us saying, hey, I never heard of your band before. I never heard of a single note of your band, and um, I am now a big fan, having heard you live for the first time. <laughs> and yeah, that was really nice. Yes, of course. I guess, I guess. Um, let's talk again about your new album. Are you quite happy with the result? What was um, the idea making this album? Um. What well, was your was, state of mind doing this? So, well, you know, so some of it kind of formed right after the first album. We were actually doing some songs live. We, had, we were doing Conduit. We were doing Nothing Wrong. Um, and soon after that, we were actually doing You Have It All live. Um, so we had quite some time to kind of form it. Um, they weren't, com uh, You Have It All didn't, uh, complete wasn't a complete formation until the album itself um but we were doing some form of it live um for about the last uh probably about seven years um yeah i just wanted to make some kind of album uh just to put just contain all the ideas um and then during uh the pandemic uh of course there's a lot more ideas and it kind of formed into a um an album about self-doubt, um, getting through difficult transitions. Um, but at the same time, it's all about uh, learning to stay positive and um, realizing realizing that, you know, we all have talent and we all have creativity. Um, and so the knowledge within us is 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 there to help us um, is, is the knowledge within us is is there to guide us through this journey in life. Mm. And um, that's basically what the album is about. That's what you have at all this track is about. But um, in the general scope of the whole album, that's that's what, what it's all about, in my opinion, <laughs> since I wrote most of it. <laughs> but that's how it all kind of came, it came through, because the album was going to be very different before the pandemic. Uh, and then during the pandemic, I ended up writing Flowing Through the Change, um, the In the Nights uh, sections as well as Lifeline, so all that kind of came out through being secluded at home and and not being around people, and um, you know, and um, and then finally just um, getting it out. <laughs> and 
I've been listening to this album a long time and I must say that the guitar playing and the bass playing is quite amazing. What do you think, guys? Oh yeah, Peter and Andy are Peter and Andy. They're just amazing. I'm listening to In you. The studio live. Great yeah, job. Andy had it. Why don't you Thank say you. something about how awesome your bass playing is, Andy? Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Andy. I think my way through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll speak for Andy. I think his bass playing is really amazing. It's it's powerful. It's melodic. It's rhythmic. It has the groove when it needs to have it. It needs when it needs melody. He's got it. And when it needs just kind of to sit back and just provide the 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 underlying kind of chord formation, if you will, he's always nailing it. And I have to say it's a real pleasure playing with Andy because I never look over and, and think, what's he doing? I, I, I know he's got it. He's playing the right things, and it helps me. I, I, in fact, when we were at Rossfest, you are mentioning Rossfest, I asked the the, um, the sound engineer because I had in-ear monitors push his bass way up because, for me, it anchors me in the songs and a lot of what I do and the way I play is based around how Andy plays. So he's really great. Thank you. <laughs> And Probably when I'm... Now, Andy, what about <laughs> Peter? <laughs> Likewise. Likewise, I mean, we, we just have amazing performers in this band, uh, regardless if they've been in the band for years or just joined a month ago. Uh, it's, it's very rewarding to see how the band has evolved. Uh, players have come and gone uh, in the 10, 12 years that uh, uh, I think uh, I think I've been in the band the longest 16 years i think and uh, so i've really been witness to how the band has evolved and it, it's really just grown into something very special uh, i think that this record is really they talk about synergy uh, I, I think that this new record is almost if you will uh, greater than the sum of of the parts it's really something to be proud of and yeah. it's all to these great players whether they've been in the band for a month or 16 years yeah and going back to Peter, um, as a guitarist, he, he's he's amazing. I mean, he plays in um, he plays in a uh, Steve Hackett uh, tribute band, um, and you could tell he likes Steve Hackett, which is perfect for me because Genesis is one of my favorite bands. Um, you know, and he's just he has such a great style, um, and not only does I mean I write a lot of the guitar melodies, but he's added a lot. Of, of himself into it as well there's definitely probably i'd say a good 50 50 like 50 percent of his guitar lines are mine 50 percent of the new guitar lines are his and he just has such a great style and he could um you know when we're rehearsing he 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 just uh, hey hey how does how does this sound and pretty much like 99.5 percent of his ideas are amazing and and i just you know I trust him, and and he always adds a couple levels to each song that we play. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Probably. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. And I must. Uh, Sorry. What's that, Steve? You were saying something. I, I was gonna say probably um, one of my favorite moments uh, with Andy on the record was on Conduit, uh, the bass solo in the middle of Conduit. Uh, we were in rehearsal, and he was he had kind of come up with that ascending line that he plays as a tap. And I was like, hey, would it be possible to do it with two hands? So he actually plays on the six string bass. He plays the bass note and then he plays the ascending line together. And we pulled all that off live in the studio. Or they pulled off that off live in the studio on Conduit. And it was a track that everybody did together. So that was wonderful. And Peter um, has been, I think, what the band's been missing because Peter's guitar playing is such a high level. Uh, that it adds this um, glue. I mean, the parts are already demanding. Um, and so Peter has the technical prowess. He has the artistic ability and he has the dedication to just make it rip. And so it was an absolute pleasure uh, working with both of them on this record. Wow. Thank you. But let's yeah. talk but about you, Stephen. That... Let's talk about you, Stephen, because the sound is close to Per per perfection, sorry. Beautiful. The, the sound is very that means a lot. Thank amazing. You. What is your secret recording such an album with this well, beautiful this, sound? That, well, thank you. Um, the well, secret, don't tell. 
<laughs> I mean, number number one, um, with this album, I insisted we do as much of it as we could at Rich Mauser's studio because Rich has this amazing house that he's converted into like a prog mecca. And the drum room sounds enormous. And so, um, but when he's working often with a lot of these bands, they're mailing tracks in, doing things from their own independent studios all around the world, and he'll mix them. But in this in this album, we actually got to go to Rich's place and record the drums there. We recorded a lot of the tracks there. We did record some stuff at my studio. But I think um, just for me, I'm really a fan of the old world style of 70s and 80s record production. So we had the space, the gear, and also the collaboration that made it. Um, and then, of course, just, you know, we're all... I'd hate, I hate to say perfectionist, but Adam would agree with that. You know, we're all very high level of what we want to hear. And so we work really hard. We're all dedicated. And just the time that we all put in on making this album feel right, but also organic. So it was like setting up a circumstance where people could bring their best moments and then, you know, working on that until it yielded and was was ready to go and, you know, not cutting corners, I guess. That would be, you know, the secret if there was. I would just say old world production, you know, going back to the way that records used to be made. And it's really hard to do on today's budgets, I got to say. But, uh, you know, I just I don't want to spend my time doing it another way. This is way more fun. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And just one more mix, and just one more mix, and maybe one more mix, and maybe uh, how about one more mix? <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually did a collaborative process on the mixing, which was really cool. Rich is, I mean, Rich is um, amazing at mixing, and so the three of us, Adam, me, and Rich, were able to sit there and sort of work on it, and you know, sort of whittle it down and collaborate on it, which I thought was incredible opportunity to uh, to do that because you know it just made everything better. So. And when you have so many parts and so many interest, instruments, and I actually had a spreadsheet of all the parts that Adam wrote so that when they came in, you know, you could see, well, and I had a shot list of this is, this is when the French horn comes in, you know, this is when the alternate keyboard melody comes in. There were just so many moving parts, and with a record like that, you can't just set it and forget it. You know, you really have to spend the time to get the, the details right because it, it affects the progression of the music, and you want to have it take you on a journey so that you can forget that you're listening to these separate parts and just consume the whole um, experience. Yeah. I think Christina mentioned, I'm sorry, Christina mentioned a short time ago that it often takes 20 minutes to explain to people what prog rock is. (laughs) And I think you really hit it right there, Steve. It really is taking many, many different elements, combining them together and into a cohesive whole. And also as, as individual musicians, uh, pushing ourselves to to maximize our, our envelope, so to speak, to 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 play as well as we can, uh, play things that that we wouldn't have thought of otherwise, and uh, to comment on on something Steve said earlier with the bass solo that I play in the song Conduit. I came to the studio with a pretty well defined idea of what I wanted to do with that bass solo, and then Steve and I get together, and and he comes up, he says, well, why don't you why don't you change this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you play it this way? And and that that solo really became ten times better than what I would have done had it been just myself because Steve hears it objectively and comes up with, with ideas and he has a way of, of pushing uh, or, or, or pulling uh, that performance out of you. And uh, Christina, you said, oh, it takes 20 minutes to explain what prog rock is. It often takes 20 minutes to explain what a producer does. And that's, that's exactly what a producer <laughs> does. They, they coax that performance out of you and make it 10 times better than, than what it would have been otherwise. And that's, that's why bands work with producers. Yeah, and 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 just add add this is that um, Stephen's like the fifth Beatle, if you will, because right. you know, like right. the George Martin effect. Because the fifth scarf. I've been, I've worked with people mixing producers and stuff, and That's... they add something. But the extent that Stephen was relentless in the pursuit of sound and perfection and and whatever, and you know, I may have my my Godin guitar, which is sitting here. I'm a big fan of Godin, which is comes from uh, from Canada, French Canadian guitar company. And they'd say that sounds great. Or I would sit there and they'd pull the guitar from me and they'd stick another one in my lap. And I just loved it. I'd just sit there as another guitar and then another guitar. And there was a moment on one solo where Steven said, "Let's stick the guitar through those Leslie cabinets." So Rio Okamoto from from Spock's Beard was there with his Leslie cabinet behind. What's a Leslie so they, cabinet? 
<laughs> evidence that spins round and round and round like the old For those days. listening so that that Santana effect or whoa, 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 the organ effect or whatever so my guitar through that and so I had this other guitar which they gave me I think it was a Gibson ES the 335 I'm not sure going through the Leslie and they had Rich Mauser controlling the Leslie and then you had Stephen controlling like my my volume con uh, on the guitar and then I had Adam in my face with his camera and it was just like this amazing uh, array of, of stuff and activity but they were very particular about the sounds and and the choices of instrumentation and there were a couple of times to be honest where you know I was playing a part and Rich Mouse would say well why don't you play it this way and he would take the guitar and play it a different way and say you know what Rich you've you've you're playing it better or different in a way than I would have just go for it and so a lot of the rhythm parts and the picking parts were actually Rich Mouser uh, in the studio and I was fine with that because there was this collective desire to make the record sound so good I, I any ego I had about it was gone out the window I just said it sounds better I want this record myself to be the best it possibly can be so great job on the production with, with Stephen really as a conclusion I would say your perfect combination of talents this is perfect combination of talents, yes. Thank you. Group hug. <laughs> what is also remarkable is the fam famous musicians um, invited in that album, such as Rio Komodo, John Davison, and what? How was it possible to to have such great musicians on that album? Um, well, I pretty much. Um, I kind of immersed myself in the progressive rock world by going to um, pr pr various progressive rock cruises. I went to uh, the Progressive Nation at Sea Cruise in 2013, and then uh, the Progressive, uh, the Cruise to the Edge 2017. Um, I met a couple of these musicians um, at the, the NAM conference. We have this thing called the NAM conference, which um, is a, a music industry conference uh, here in California. And uh, I basically I've just kind of kept up with relationships and uh, over time um, I've asked them if they were interested in collaborating or just being a guest on um, one or two tracks and, and they were all pretty interested um, and it just sort of worked out uh, the timing wise. I wasn't sure they were all going to be able to do it. Um, I had John Davison and Billy Sherwood in mind for a long time for the track you have it all and um it just worked out so great that billy was able to come to the studio and record and that john davison was able to uh, record from his house um and i think he, li he lives in texas so he he sent us his tracks um via the internet <laughs> and uh, i was so glad and steve suggested um eric moore how did you meet eric moore steve I knew Eric Moore through Rawl. So uh, Rawl, who did some drum teching for us on this project, uh, I was showing him the demos, uh, which were all MIDI. And uh, Rawl was a little, he had had a beer or two. He was like, you got to get Eric Moore on this. And of course, he's drum tech for Eric Moore. So I'm like, uh, yeah, if we can get him, because Eric's a busy guy. And he said, oh, I can get him. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we got him. And uh, yeah, it was uh an interesting choice because he's not a prog guy per se, but uh, I knew he could handle the parts. And I also thought he would bring something very different to the record. And so I wanted to make sure that uh, we didn't make a record that sounded like anything else. I wanted to push the envelope a little bit. Um, so I was really, really, really happy when Eric agreed to uh, come in on three of the songs. And, yeah, and, uh, and because uh, Rich Mauser, um, you know, he's worked with Jimmy Keegan and Rio Okamoto several times on Spock's Beard albums, and he just worked with Rio on a solo album. You know, they work, they work so well together. It was very easy for them to come in uh, for a couple days and, 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 have, and do their uh, parts on the, uh, on the album. Of course. They were great. Jimmy was incredible. Jimmy uh, Keegan. He, yeah. He played on Our Test of Universe and also on Lifeline. And, I mean, he could have easily done the whole record. Uh, but, uh, wow. And then Michael Cabrant, who played on two tracks from the EP, he's on the record as well. He was the drummer in my very first band. 
and uh, he's also an amazing musician. He can play like seven instruments. And when he was in a prog band when we were in high school, uh, he used to play drums and keyboard at the same time. So huh. <laughs> pretty, pretty great, uh, pretty great drumming on this record, for sure. It's just, it's just more family. In fact. <laughs> yeah, really. So as to conclude, I would love to, to ask for each of you two questions. We'll start with Christina. Okay. What is your favorite band and why? Well, Yes is my favorite band. Um, since since I was 14 and and my my buddy showed me classic Yes. We were we were on a, a high school orchestra bus trip uh, to some competition or something and and I was like, "Hey, what are you listening to?" and and he showed me classic Yes and I was like <laughs> and so kind of the rest is history. I bought every Yes album I could as quickly as I could afford to do so. And uh, uh, so why are they my favorite band? Well, that's a little hard to pin down, but I can tell you some things I love about them. Uh, for sure, the uh, just the, the uplifting um, energy of the music uh, just uh, is just very happy and uh, just very energetic and very peaceful. Um, I'm, you know, I've played violin for, since I was a kid, and um, so the, the complex arrangements always appealed to me because I had listened to classical music. Um, I love odd time signatures. I love vocal harmonies. I, I would, it's Evan. Hi, Evan. Hi. Um, welcome. I always, uh, I always sang um, since since I was a kid. Actually, apparently, rumor has it, my mom told me before I spoke, I was humming all the time. So that was, she said I had like this little tune that I would hum all the time when I was happy. And she says she wished she recorded it, but it wasn't in the days of uh, mobile recording devices. So she, she didn't do that. But, uh, but I, but I've always really liked to, to sing and I, sang in choirs and church and in school and um so all those things were just really a part of me and so it, yes just made sense for me for for who i was musically and and personally so um yeah i've i've seen them a crazy amount of times i've met them and 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 grilled them with all the musical questions like how did you get this sound on that album and and I've had a million CDs signed, and um, yeah, so I, I don't know. Hopefully, that's a that's probably a more thorough answer than you wanted, but that's my specialty. <laughs> Adam, it's your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Yes. Well, yes is my favorite <laughs> band as well, obviously. Um, yeah, I love them so much. Um, they open up my world, my mind. Um, I had no idea music existed like that before I listened to Yes, and it just took me on a whole trajectory of progressive rock and beautiful music. Again, I love how uplifting they were um, when I was going through high school. I also um, started listening to them when I was 14, and um, I didn't really have much of a direction. Like I knew I was in the, I, I liked theater, and I, I definitely liked music. I was into acting, of course. Um, But I didn't real, I don't know, I just didn't re have like a direction. I, I was unsure of myself and where I kind of fit in. And so hearing that music just really inspired me uh, and um, inspired um, my life, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Andy. Well, I, I also am a big fan of Yes, of course, but I would have to say my favorite band is actually Rush. Rush. And the reason why uh, Rush, I was, uh, I was probably 13, 14 years old, taking guitar lessons, just becoming interested in music. And I was at a friend's house, and somebody put on the Hemispheres record, and I heard La Via Strangiato, and it just blew my mind. I, I, I had never heard anything like it before. And uh, there's a bass solo in that song that is just incredible. And I heard that, I was like, wow, you know, and it made me 
really changed the direction of my, my guitar lessons. I ran to my guitar teacher. I want to learn this. I want to learn this. Said, okay, well, let's learn scales first. And you know, and uh, so I, I really admire the the integrity of, of the band Rush. Uh, the fact that early in their career, they would uh, they they would they actually preferred to go back to their day jobs rather than compromise their their songwriting and their their musical integrity. They had an album that didn't sell so well, and there was a lot of pressure to record hits, singles, and but they said we're, we're going to stay true to what we want to do, even if it means we have to go back to our day jobs. So I really admired that. Uh, I admired the musical integrity, the complexity of the music, and as well as the lyrics. A lot has been said about Neil Peart's lyrics. The drummer is also the, the lyricist. Uh, the lyrics are very intelligent. They're, they're very uh, meaningful and thoughtful, and they're also well constructed from a technical point of view. So there's, there's all of that put together. And uh, uh, so uh, I also admire them for their integrity personally. Uh, these guys, uh, for rock stars, these guys have never gotten drunk, done heroin, and crashed their cars, right? They, they've always lived their lives <laughs> in an exemplary manner. Um, they've all been married to this, their same wives since they were in their 20s. Uh, they're, they're just great guys in general and they don't take themselves too seriously alex the guitar player is known for a sense of humor which uh, i really admire i i'm known for trying to tell jokes and things like that and he, he's always joking around and, and not taking the band too seriously and they do funny things on stage they have funny little videos getty the bass player has literally washing machines on stage so they they do fun things and they, they don't take it themselves too seriously so so many reasons to love rap peter Myself, yeah, I'm not sure. But my it's okay. Adam, because you were saying it was. Yeah, something's going on with your microphone, Peter. Yes, uh, sir. Stephen, maybe. Connection. You should probably come back in. Or just plug in the just the plug in just the standard mic sound because we're getting every other word. Okay. Oh, you trust me. Yeah, I think we lost it. Uh, he's way, changing. Evan, Oh, he's changing it. Uh, by the way, you could ask Evan. Evan is here, our drummer. He just arrived. So if you want to ask him a question. Yes, of course. Can. So uh, can you, uh, <laughs> please to meet you, can you introduce yourself, please? Dear new member. <laughs> yes. Uh, We're listening it's, to it's, you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Evan, and I've been playing drums since I was about five. Um, and because uh, my, 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 my dad's a musician and, and I just kind of grew up around music, um, probably start, started playing um, like uh, Motown and, and, and uh, oldies and stuff like that, like uh, mostly, mostly funk and, and, and uh, old like classic rock. And uh, I think... Uh, I, I talked over your actual question. <laughs> <laughs> Could you repeat the question for Evan? Yes. What would be your favorite band and why? Um, it's really it's really difficult for me to pick a favorite band. Um, I can I can do like a a, a deep dive or a, like a hyper fixation for a little while and then like gobble everything up and then move on to the next obsession uh for a very long time my favorite band was 311 uh because the 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 because of the heavy riffs and the and the uh the the the, the drumming was very really intricate and, and uh interesting and they would put bring in lots of different styles to in the same song and it always seems to to um to to work well and it carried you on a on a, on a journey through that uh and uh, and then I got really into Modesky, Martin, and Wood for a yes. while. <laughs> I thought Billy Martin was a genius. Um, uh, he he is. He's a he's a he's a crazy man. He's awesome. Um, and then uh, uh, lately, I've been just obsessed with Snarky Puppy. Um, and every drummer that has ever played with them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I got, um, uh, uh, I got a chance to, I, I've only seen them twice, but the second time I saw them, uh, three drummers who had previously played them just happened to be there. 
and uh, so on one of the songs, they they brought each of them in, and they had like this um, rotating drum solo. Uh, where they all just like came in and, and or, or, or grabbed percussion instruments and it was uh, it was just amazing. And one was more question, the last one, more difficult for each of, each of you. The song you wish you had written. Mm. Andy, uh, the song oh, you wish uh, you had written. Gosh. <laughs> Song I wish I had written. Gosh, I wish. My goodness, that's that that boy. That, that's a tough one. I wish I had written uh, "The Spirit of Radio" by Rush. <laughs> that's just such a cool song on so many levels. Uh, it's a it's a rocking song. It, it, the guitar player playing is very intricate in it. it. It taught me how to play guitar in ways that I had never done before. And it's it's just a fun song. Every time I've seen Rush live and that song comes on, I just become very happy. Steven, one song. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was still uh, thinking on your last question. Um, but uh, I would say, If These Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Peter, now. All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. I've just switched to my phone for some reason. Let's go. Let's just shut off my PC here. Um, Phil, first question. My favorite band is Genesis and why I love the mixture of the classical kind of sensibilities that, that Tony Banks brings on one extreme. And then on the other extreme, Steve Hackett, who's a self-taught musician like I am as a guitarist, who brought that classical element, but also brought a whole bunch of weird sounds and accompaniment. And then you got Mike Rutherford being the the general kind of whatever it takes to create a song, whether it's 12 string or bass or, or whatever. And then Phil Collins rooting that all on drums. And then of course the creative nonsense of Peter Gabriel. I love all that, that, that kind of very English side of the, the band. So that 70s period is my favorite. And that's why I like them the most. Uh, I love Yes too as well. Favorite a song I wish I'd written. You know, the first thing that popped into my head was Blood on the Rooftops by Genesis, because mm. it has the classical guitar opening, which I love to play and I've played live with my Steve Hackett tribute band and actually I played it when Armando Gala was there and uh, Paul Whitehead, the guy that, that uh, <laughs> did the artwork for Genesis and during the performance Armando sent a video copy of it to Steve Hackett and said guess what I'm watching which was kind of quite funny for me but playing that nylon string bit is, is beautiful and then the song itself lyrically, musically to me it's one of the most perfectly constructed songs that anyone can listen to whether you're a prog fan or not Adam so I, I'm let's see I'm hesitant to name any classic songs just because I wasn't writing things back then but when, when I'm when, when, I, when I was writing uh, when I was like knee deep into writing music for low bait scarp I kind of came across um, Haken So I would say I would say the mountain anything on the mountain album I I've listened to, and the first time I heard it I was blown away and and I I pretty much I was like I can't believe I've never thought of this kind of these chord progressions before, uh, these melodies like I I, sh I I wish I would have wrote any of these like so I would say if I wanted to narrow it down to any song I would probably say uh, Atlas Stone. Uh, oh, Cockroach King would be good too. I'll narrow it down to those two songs. I wish I wrote either Atlas Stone or Cockroach King <laughs> on the mountain from Haken. <laughs> May I answer the last question? Yes. Okay. So when I was just in college, my friend who was practically a musicologist, he listened to so much music. I, I asked him, uh, I need new. I need a new band. Who who would you say I should listen to? And he said, I think Radiohead is the band for you. And so the very first Radiohead album that I ever heard was Kid A. Yes. And it was the song "Everything in Its Right Place" that 
launched me into a lifelong love of Radiohead. And so, of course, getting into um, OK Computer and How to Disappear Completely, the string arrangements with all the sliding and slurs and just the lushness of the arrangements. There was Odd Time Adventures. It was Forlorn. It was emotional. And uh, the production uh, was just completely out of the way. And all you did was feel. And so that that's why Radiohead is uh, is by far my favorite band of all time. It's your turn, chère madame. <laughs> so, um, I guess it, it's kind of, it, it's before I sort of stole Adam Sunder by saying a bunch of stuff about yes before he had you, so so he reciprocated here because I was definitely thinking about Haken, although I'm, I'm kind of torn because I really wanted to, I, I, I would say, and you and I, oh. is a song that is so near and dear to my heart that I kind of, I so much identify with it that I just feel like I wish I wrote it. But then, but then there's this song by Hagen called Crystallized that is just, it's just amazing. It has. It has a lot of things that really that I really identify with musically. It has that whole little renaissance break in the middle where all of a sudden we're like transported back in history. And, and then it's got, you know, it has all the heavy stuff and has the lovely vocal harmonies. And, and, uh, it, and those things are all sort of, they just sort of connect with all the synapses in my brain. So it's, it's almost a tie you know, for two kind of two different two different reasons, but uh, but those would probably be my. I'm I'm sorry, but but I had to pick two. <laughs> By the way, something that might be interested uh, interesting to your readers or listeners uh, is that Christina actually played with Yes um, in the Magnification Tour um, with the orchestra in Ohio in Ohio. Just, <laughs> was a very exciting moment. I was, I was very excited. My, uh, my friend, um, Tim was doing the, uh, the contracting for that. And you know, that's, that's the call you want to get. Hey, do you want to, do you want to play in the orchestra with yes? In, in, at Blossom Music Center. And I was like, uh, of course. It, it, it was check my schedule. It was a very oh, yeah. difficult <laughs> performance to get to because I actually, um, we were actually planning on, so I grew up in Ohio, but we were planning on moving to Arizona uh, the week before the concert. And so we drove across the country to Arizona and um, rolled into our apartment and I got into the not cleaned yet shower in our new apartment and just took a shower. And then we turned around and, and my husband took me to the airport and uh and I flew back and uh, went on the red eye and and arrived early in the morning to uh, to do our rehearsals and and concert and it was, I mean it was so worth it. But I was <laughs> incredible. That was really exciting, exciting moment. The hardest thing was that there was a microphone mounted on the bridge of my violin right here, mm. and. I couldn't sing every word of every song <laughs> because this mic was right here and it would be quite obnoxious. So I had to just just very quietly button my lips while I was playing. But she it brought was... tape for your exactly <laughs> yeah brought tape for your mouth. <laughs> but it was it was uh, it was a wonderful experience. I'm really thankful to have, have had that experience. And what about you, newcomer? Your oh. favorite song ever? Um, uh, I don't know if it's my favorite song ever, but uh, but Stephen bringing up Radiohead reminded me of uh, I think maybe my favorite Radiohead song, which is Pyramid Song, mm. off of Amnesiac. I yes. always get swept away with that song. It's amazing. Uh, it's like it's like I just kind of like it. It's it, I feel it in my chest. Just kind of like this. It breathes, you know. I don't know. I, I, I <laughs> yes, it does. That song, starting with the the piano, and then the strings and the vocals, and then when the when the drums finally come in, it's just 
I don't know. It's uh, uh it's, it's it's like I get tingles on the back of my neck. It's definitely amazing. So that's the end now. It was really pleasant talking with you. Really, I had a great time. Thank you for your time and answers. I wish you all the best, and I see you soon. Sebastian, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so thank much. You and much. sorry for my French accent. I oh, do my best. Oh, thank you. But thank you. really, it was great. And you're beautiful people. Really. <laughs> thank you. And really, you deserve all the best. And I wish you all the best once again. And I wish you a good day. Bye bye. Right. Thank, thank you. All the best. Thank you. It was well. an honor. Thank bye you, bye. Thanks. Bye bye. bye, -bye.